All right, so uh, that's pretty uh, tough to go up after Unreal and uh, Microsoft and, and HTC, but I think it smooths nicely into actually using <clears throat> VR as a tool to design, um, not only for visualization. So what we're looking at is actually sketching and designing directly into, in 3D and then bringing that content along in your workflow. So this is Paul here. He's sketching at one-to-one -one scale, and what we see with Paul is he, he often scales up and down his sketch as he's sketching. So that's one thing that you can do in VR that is no other platform really allows right now. I mean, usually when you're in the CAD environment, you're just behind your screen. Um, so we're using a, a set of tools that allow him to do things like revolves. He's using strokes primarily right now. He's laying the foundation for his car. Um, but then you have things like revolves and surfaces, which then allow you to extend your creativity. So um, I'll just move on from there. So we're a cross-platform design tool, and we're really focused on uh, bringing that human touch into the 3D design experience. So a lot less of mouse clicking and keyboard shortcuts, and a lot more of actually gestural-based input. Um, we're working across the iPad Pro and touch devices, as well as VR devices, and we're starting to do some development into the AR space. If we have some time, I'll show you a quick video. Um, we're also looking at 3D printing and some of the emerging technologies and giving people access to these technologies. Uh, so it all starts with a sketch. Um, that goes from anything from Leonardo da Vinci, uh, excuse me for this, uh, with uh, trying to express an idea, taking multiple views, all the way to present day um, automotive design and, and, and product design. So it's really about understanding the proportions and scales, and you need to end up doing at least three or four sketches to really get an idea and, and translate that to the rest of the team. Um, this, is your, this is your platform, your desk. And this is your interface. So this is a highly customizable interface. You bring whatever you want to it, and then you are able to take it further. But when you want to go into 3D, which a lot of um, you know, automotive, industrial design, <clears throat> pretty much all of these professions require you to go into 3D at some point before you go to production, um, this is now your, your hardware, right? Um, and this is now your interface. So this is a very daunting interface, especially for people that are highly spatially aware and really focused on bringing that creative element into, into their design environment, right? Um, and this is how we collaborate in that space. This is how we discuss in that space. We sit behind a screen, we point at things, uh, hey, move your mouse, click it here and there. Uh, so it's, it's really kind of a clash. Uh, these devices too seem quite promising, um, bring that human touch through a stylus and through a touch screen. Um, you know, looks quite promising as well. However, there's still this huge, huge, huge hurdle. Uh, this is how you, how can you get around the perspective? Um, how are you going to twist the perspective and scale? It's, it really about, comes down to navigation. So navigation behind a 2D medium is always going to be a limiting factor for 3D design tools. Um, it's because you're, you're breaking it down into different views. So nothing's really a planar view. I mean, okay, this very simple house is, but how can you take a car and, and, and split that in a planar view, you know, or, or even a hair dryer? Um, so if we just look at the automotive industry, this is one of the industries that we're really focused on right now. It's one of the industries that's embracing the technology today, and it's also an industry that relies 100% on keep preserving the human aspect of the original design. So coming from a sketch directly into uh, the finished product. Um, so we're looking back in history, and we zoom up to modern day. We're still sitting behind a 2D medium, and we're still quite constrained by the bounds of that 2D medium. Oh, sorry for this. Excuse me. Um, oh, uh, it couldn't go any better, right? Um, and so because of the, those restrictions, we still rely on um, very traditional means of, of, of expressing and bringing ideas to life. And these are really powerful. It's not just... Um, you know, uh, scraping, scraping clay by hand. There's actually some really sophistication that goes into this where you're scanning and bringing it back in. And, and, and you know, there's a lot of skill. But this is where the human hand plays a very heavy role in the design process. So we have some historical elements here, and then we have kind of zooming into modern day. Um, really similar process, but what it allows you to do is get a really good idea of that one-to-one -one perspective. Um, and as, let's look at this, the design process. So if we look at the uh, Jaguar as an example, um, you come from a, a, a sketch, to a 3D model to clay, and you end up in these cyclical revolves, right? You're, you're going back and forth from your sketch to CAD to kind of reaffirm things, and you're going from CAD to, to 3D model, or to the, your, your, your clay model to reaffirm, and, and your goal is really just to get down to that original intent. So there's a lot of time that can be saved if you're using tools like um, the Oculus Rift or 
the HTC Vive, where you can actually visualize things at one-to-one -one scale. And with our tool, what we're looking to do is actually kill off, if I'm bold enough to say that, 2D sketching, and come from the other side and give that one-to-one -one perspective, being able to sketch at one-to-one -one perspective, understanding your model and your design. We don't think that we're going to kill off clay modeling. It, it gives you some tactility and a certain tangibility that, um, that you know, a lot of virtual tools are never going to give you. That haptic feedback's just not there. Um, and then production-ready surfaces, we're not really interested in that. We're actually interested in that initial content and, and, and that exploration phase. So here's Gravity Sketch in its kind of three phases today. Uh, you can come in with some quick sketches. So just really quickly waving your hand. You saw Paul in the beginning doing a bit of that. Um, then you can go into kind of hashing it out with more controlled points and, and Bezier curves with pipes. Uh, and then you can actually do go straight into full surface modeling. And I'll show you a bit of a workflow in a minute here. Um, so these platforms are allowing us to do a lot. Um, and that's really just about changing the way that we're going to use and access tools. So instead of clicking a drop down menu, how are we going to package these different tools and experiences into two controllers with a bunch of buttons? Um, so I'll play one more video here. OK, so here's a bit of a workflow. So this is our Surface tool. We're using the Oculus Rift controllers. Um, so we're doing NURBS modeling in VR. Um, and you're able to really shape and expand your surfaces using the controllers. So simple interactions. Um, but allowing you to have a lot of powerful behavior. Um, chose to use uh, a helmet as opposed to a car because it's a lot faster. So um, we've clipped out a few things here, but essentially you get the gist of it. Um, the most of the stuff that was clipped out is mainly just twi tweaking and, and, and adjusting surfaces after you've already laid them out. Um, so with a mirror plane on, this proves to be a really valuable tool. Um, within you know, 30, 40 minutes, you've hashed out a rough idea, concept of what you'd like to, to bring to life. And then from there, you could take that into the next phase in your design process. Um, so some of the interactions and things like that are, are things that we just don't have a, in a, a, a 2D interface. Um, things like color selection. Um, you want that on the man. You want that on your hand. You want that readily available as, as, at the second, at the moment, that you want to change the color of a surface. Um, the interface, you, we need to have a responsive interface that kind of shows what you're going to get before you know, clicking on a menu. because when you're in VR, you're in this mode of just creativity. It's a lot less of kind of poking around menus or reading guides. Um, so one of the big challenges that we have as a company is trying to understand that user behavior and trimming, ev trimming down all the interactions into one-step processes. So this, this kind of two-step process is really only about adjusting that surface after you've already laid it. But you very well may be happy after you've um, laid the first surface with what you have. Um, so after you've finished up your model, you can then take that model out. And one thing that we do that we haven't seen any other software do is we bring that directly into a CAD package as NURBS data. So from there, you can use all the traditional tools that you're used to using, in, whether it be Katia or Rhino or, 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 um, or Alias. And then from there, you can just pop it over into, into a key shot for just a quick render. So it's really about making uh, quick and uh, precise and interesting um, concepts and concept models really on the fly re as opposed to going through um, the sketching phase to the CAD phase and then um, hoping to get to to the um, hoping to get to the to the um, excuse me yeah hoping to get to the clay model phase which which does take some time um, so the three things that we're really powerful of, and, and, and some things are indicative of, of just having VR or, or AR technologies is 3D strokes and surfaces. So you know, not trying to approximate with your mouse and, and navigation or a, to create a 3D stroke. You actually just create this 3D stroke with your hand. Same with the surfaces. Unlimited views. So you don't have to sketch six or seven views of this car. You sketch one view. You can view it in unlimited amounts and, and, and actually throw you guys in a different environment and a different space, right? So I can, you can view it, view it from my, your perspective. Someone can view it from my perspective. Um, and then working at any scale. So that's something that no 2D screen is ever going to offer you. Um, this is a model that was created in Gravity Sketch. Uh, this took two hours. So start to finish. You did interior and exterior, two hours. And that's a nervous-based model. Took that into KeyShot and rendered it out on the fly. So really, two and a half hours of work, and you have something that you can is presentable quality. Um, a few others from our beta community. So this is a guy, he's um, actually taking his sketches into Photoshop. 
and then he's doing some touch up in Photoshop, kind of actually taking the 3D back into a 2D medium. So it's quite interesting. That workflow is really interesting for us. Um, this is him again, uh, you know, looking at bringing that from Gravity Sketch into Photoshop and then continuing to do some, some touch up work in there. Um, and this is one of our uh, kind of flagship beta testers. He's been using the tool since we launched, and um, this is actually a six hour sketch, so <laughs> not as impressive, but quite impressive in the sense of, um, you know, he was able to create this kind of picturesque scene in Gravity Sketch without ever touching uh, a CAD package. So going straight from Gravity Sketch, key shot, key shot to Photoshop. Um, and this scales across other industries. So a lot of other industries still depend on that human hand and that human input, and they use traditional means to express that. Um, there's a tactility in these means, but there's also uh, time and efficiency that can be saved using more immersive tools. Uh, architecture is one of the ones that we want to go after in the future. However, when you look at architecture studios, they work so much differently. So the vehicle design studio, you can kind of uh, approximate the, the kind of design workflow. In architecture studio, you don't know if they're going to start with a crumpled piece of paper, a sketch, or, or a really elaborate, beautiful model. Um, so we, we're kind of taking up baby steps in this space, but we have some interesting uh, context, and, and, and we're talking with some interesting people. And so we've actually seen um, some of our beta users actually start to explore. This is a home remodeling of, of one of our beta users. So he brought in 2D images into Gravity Sketch, scaled them, and then he was able to lay the 3D content in the addition of this house that he's looking to build. So we're really happy about um, seeing users that actually are exploring the spaces that we have this kind of inclination to go forward and, and go after. Um, this is a quote that was from an article that was written about us uh, earlier in 2016. And I think it really speaks true to our message. Um, as these immersive technologies become to take off, begin to take off, the, the idea that um, you need tools like uh, Photoshop for, for, for 3D is actually super, super relevant, super prevalent. And so many of us here, we know how to use 3D CAD tools, but think about you know, your children or your parents. Um, these, these are, these are going to be skills that are going to be needed. And what we're going to try to do as a company is really make these experiences as intuitive as possible. And so I have one last video to show you if it works. I know I'm having some technical challenges. Um, but it, we're looking at the future of uh, what hand tracking is going to allow us to do. And that's going to actually scale from VR directly into AR. Yeah. So um, we've been playing with Elite Motion quite a bit. And we're actually just doing like a triple SDK now. So we're doing an SDK that would work for Oculus Rift, um, HTC Vive, and now on Leap Motion, hoping to scale that into tools like Microsoft Tools, um, as well as Magic Leap when it, when it releases. So being able to actually bring your hands and define your own gestures, but also bring your own tools. So can we track your pencil? You, maybe you just feel comfortable picking up your own pencil or a hammer, for example, and how does that translate into a digital tool? Um, so those are the spaces that we're looking at for rolling out in, in the next year. And this year, we're really focused on VR um, and, and the current hardware. But, um, but once these hand tracking techni technologies are really ready to go, um, we think it's going to open up a whole new space. So that's, uh, that's pretty much my presentation. And uh, I'll leave you with the, the last rendering. And uh, that's our info there, gravitysketch.com. We're on Twitter. Um, all of our users post cool stuff to us on Twitter. So all those renders that you saw, I pulled down from Twitter. So if you guys are interested in seeing more. Uh, and then contact us, info gravitysketch.com. We can get you guys set up with a beta key, and you can start exploring it if you have the HTC Vive or Oculus Rift. So thank you very much.